Now, as defence experts predict that the capital of Ukraine could fall within days, it's easy to despair that we haven't done more. It's easy to pour scorn on the sanctions the UK government has announced to say that they're nowhere near enough and just to ridicule Foreign Secretary Liz Truss for the fur hat she wore when she visited Moscow earlier this month to try to talk some sense into President Putin. It's easy to wring our hands and say we've been useless. It's easy to lament Western weakness and bemoan our collective lack of strategic foresight. It's easy to adopt a fatalistic attitude to what's happened, shrugging that Britain is no longer a big player on the world stage. Well, some of that is right. The West has been complacent, allowing the Russian president to pursue his malign territorial ambitions. And the UK government shouldn't have allowed so much Russian money to wash through London or legitimise Putin's oligarchs. But during this crisis, the UK has shown that it is still a significant player on the world stage. And I think that's partly down to Brexit. The truth is that we have led the global response to this crisis, tirelessly pursuing diplomatic solutions, even when it was hopeless, and then announcing sanctions against Russia before the EU or the US. Indeed, we've been actively supporting Ukraine since way back in 2014, following the annexation of Crimea. So we did see this coming and we did try to do something about it. Members of the British Armed Forces have been stationed in Ukraine for years, helping train the Ukrainian military to defend their country. We have engaged in multiple joint training operations. We have put boots on the ground, ships in the sea and parachutes in the air. Now, against a Russian army several times the size of our own and theirs, of course it's not enough. But we have been there, which is more than can be said for most of our allies. This isn't just about training. We've been sending non-lethal equipment to Ukraine for years, £2.2 million worth. The UK was one of the first countries to send lethal equipment. The UK has led the way, arguing for Russia to be kicked out of the international bank transfer system SWIFT. What does the EU do? Well, pretty much nothing. To date, EU support, if we could call it that, has been limited to what they call civilian security. In other words, peacekeeping. The truth is that the EU has not wanted to rattle Putin's cage because Germany gets at least 30% of its gas from Russia. Italy is also desperately exposed. Just look what happened yesterday. The EU kiboshed attempts to kick Russia out of the SWIFT system. German Chancellor Scholz confirmed that he is against this move. Frankly, it's a miracle he pressed pause on Russia's new gas pipeline to Germany, Nord Stream 2. It's no accident, I think, that the UK has been very confident in leading the way in this crisis. That is a benefit of Brexit. We are punching above our weight. If we were still in the EU, I think there would have been a much more pressurised situation for a united voice. And guess what? We would have had to have gone at the pace of the slowest member, i.e. Germany. So let's not talk ourselves down too much because we are just beginning to show what we can do now we've left the EU.